All right, let's go. It's uh, August, amazing or ridiculous, post Barbieheimer edition with Lito. Amazing or ridiculous, Ted Cruz says Bar already. Amazing or ridiculous, Ted Cruz. <laughs> what he said about Barbie. Amazing ridiculous. or ridiculous, Ted Cruz. He says ridiculous. Barbie is brainwashing young girls with Chinese propaganda. Do you remember any uh, Chinese propaganda in the movie? I think there was an Asian person in it. Is that what he's referring to? Probably. In his eyes, that's dangerous enough, most likely. Um, that's just so beyond ridiculous. Look, I, I know that there are people that don't like this film, and I I'm not saying it's a perfect film. It had some flaws. The screenplay, to me, was a little overly ambitious sometimes, but I still really enjoyed the film. The reason that they're pissed people like Ted Cruz at this film is because it's adding fuel to a lot of the awakening that's happening in the female population or the female oriented population in this country and they just don't want to see that they don't want it to happen it feels like we're i mean i didn't live through the 50s obviously but i mean i've seen a lot of testimonies about what that was like in the 50s when a lot of women started to discover you know hey we are powerful and we can be awesome and so it reminds me almost the time we're living in now of pleasantville almost like the men are trying to quash this uprising down but you can't quash it down this film by the end of today, I think it will have crossed $870 million worldwide. This is going to be a billion dollar plus film, probably gonna hit 1.5 before it's all said and done worldwide. And you know what? There's nothing you can do about it, Ted Cruz. Amazing or ridiculous, Cardi B throws her microphone into the audience, hits an audience member, will not be charged. I don't know. I mean, like, if you choose violence as the response to violence, I feel like there has to be some accountability and some culpability there. But I will say it's amazing that she did it because I am so f sick and tired of seeing these audience members that have lost their grasp on reality and think that it's okay to just start heaving things at performers. Like, wait, it's wait, wait, wait. They've, lost their, they've lost their grasp on decorum. Yeah, I mean, they just don't, it's like the social contracts keep breaking down in various ways. And this to me is terrifying because what are they gonna have to do? They're gonna end up having to put up like some sort of bulletproof plexiglass shield that goes from the floor to the ceiling for these performers. When it first started happening, it was like, oh, that's a little nuts. And then like everything else, one person saw it and 75,000 other idiots decided I need to do what this person is doing. Amazing or ridiculous, Dwayne Johnson blames Warner Brothers and DC Studios for why we're not getting a Black Adam 2. And I don't follow DC really at all, but I know people are pissed off about something. He has a point in a way because there, it's the way DC has handled their universe, in my opinion, from the start has been very much like, huh? It's like they were reactive to what Marvel did and the success Marvel had, but it's like they didn't really have a cohesive and clear plan from the beginning. It was just kind of like, eh, we'll do stuff and see what happens. But at the same time, maybe Black Adam just wasn't that good of a film. Amazing or ridiculous, Days of Our Lives producer Albert Alar fired after making inappropriate and offensive comments, bullying, intimidation, groping female cast members, and forcibly kissing an actress without her consent. By the way, these are things that are all regularly used as storylines on Days of Our Lives, but apparently can't do it on the set. Um, how are these people still getting away with this kind of behavior in 2023? Haven't we rooted all this stuff out? I'd say it's both amazing and ridiculous, and it's amazing that you know there is some sort of accountability out there, but it's also ridiculous, as you said, that this is still happening. And it it does not surprise me. It does not shock me at all. I've been in the audition room and I've had some things said to me that, you know, both during the audition and afterwards that made me like, oh, my God, I just got propositioned. You know, is it still hard, do you think, for 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 people on a show, even an established show to complain about this stuff? I think it is. And I think it's also it's not just the fear of losing your job. I think it's the fear of. Everyone was willing, everyone around me was willing to let this go and let, willing to let this person get away with it for so long. If I speak up and I cause trouble, maybe all of them are going to start to get angry at me. Why couldn't you just stay quiet and play the game and like everything would have been fine? I mean, and then they have to be accountable for their actions. Well, so-and-so spoke up. 
And they said, you were in the room. How come you didn't say anything? And then they become canceled or, you know, whatever the hell people do. I think there's a lot of fear in terms of speaking up for many reasons, but I'm glad that people are, because as I said, it's happened to me and I'm such a nobody that I was like, I'm just going to finish the audition and get the hell out of the room and try to avoid this person's, you know, social situations. But it happens. It still happens. That's why as much as it depresses me, it does not surprise me at all. Was this a guy or a girl? Let's just say it's happened on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. So, Good well, for thanks you. a lot. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to You Can't Beat Blue on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And you can send your questions and comments to me directly at youcanbeatblue at gmail.com. I answer them all.